We're filming Tarak taming the Bennu today. And be a little more like, there? even more, yeah, like forehead to forehead almost. Okay, like there? Yeah, like that. And eyes closed now? Yeah, yeah, sure. Next vision is quite immaculate. There's a version where you boom, chamber and see him, and then throw. So just quick, quicker from when I see him. Yes, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Yeah. perfect. I'll do that. Korra, an ex Mother World soldier, leads a resistance against the tyranny. And along with Gunner, a Velt farmer, who she cruises around the galaxy to gather up a team to take a stand against the bad guys. It's a story of a few against many, impossible odds, good versus evil. I'm getting a chance to tell a story that I've been thinking about for quite a while. Today we're going to be taking you behind the scenes of this upcoming Netflix film with this fictional world. We made it to day 108. If everything goes well, 44 more days. When you're in a green screen environment, the actors really have to sell what you don't see. Just trying to take what you know in your imagination to be true that we don't see now, but having to always have that in your head. But before we get into more of these moments, today's trivia question, Zack Snyder is responsible for the directing and story of this film, but what was his first film where he made his directorial debut in? Leave your guesses in the comments down below and stick around to the end of the video to find out if your answer was correct. Foot shot is like real. That's me like, ah, getting blasted by the helicopter trying to film the feet of the actors who are also getting blasted with the wind, by the way. <laughs> they all had dirt in their ears and their noses, but they forgave me. So like that shot right there, that's the actual village. Where that spaceship is, we had a helicopter just kind of lowering itself. And you can see how much dust that a helicopter creates. Rebel Moon is inspired by the works of the Star Wars films and heavy metal magazines. Its logo is a homage to the latter. As soon as you go like this, and then you spin on him, just, he just goes, wham! Like there's like no, okay, so. Cause right now there's a lot of. Here, they should go. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so do it again. Boom! Yeah, that would be amazing. Okay. <laughs> The project began development as a Star Wars film that Snyder had pitched to Lucasfilm shortly after the sale of Lucasfilm to the Walt Disney Company in 2012. This pitch was to be a more mature take on the Star Wars universe. Since Zack Snyder's name is all over this project, it would make sense that he would be front and center, telling the audience what he has in store for people who are going to be watching this film once it releases on Netflix on December 22nd. So that means that we just, oh, yeah, we'll pick that up again. Yeah. If it's so good, maybe we'll just say that's it, that's the movie. One shot. What do you want to do for the other 140 days? Go to Bora Bora? Coachella. Coachella! That'd be cool. And I'm of course, Snyder is not the only person attached to this project. Sofia Butella stars in this film, and it's incredible to see not only the moments where she trained, but seeing Snyder by her side, directing her movements, and the vision he has for the fighting sequences. Cora moves in a particular way, and I wanted to embody that truly. It's fun for me to try to push myself, but I cannot do it myself without the help of the whole team. And there's not one moment, even if it was hard and I was tired, that I didn't want this, and I don't want it to end. We're gonna have to fight. This is Sophia's first leading role, and of course, she was very excited to do so. And during an interview, she praised Snyder for his role in the film. He brought so much to me, and the fact that he believed in me the way he did touched me, touched me so much, and he's someone who is truly an enthusiast and loves movies. If we do three, two, one, go, and go is throw. Okay. Right? Ready. Uh, three, two, one, go! Just did a little wrap around. Sure. And speaking of Zack Snyder, reporters caught up with him about the beginning process of this film and the inspiration for it. In the fall of 77, I got a movie camera and I'd made a bunch of stop action animation films with my Star Wars figures. And that continued for quite a while, um, for a couple of years. I'd say from then, I was pretty much interested in making my own sci-fi film. But real quick, make sure you guys check out our Instagram page linked down in the description. There's a ton of interview moments and memes, so make sure you check it out and give us a follow.
This movie, for me, existed elementally for 20 years. It's a story of a few against many, impossible odds, good versus evil. Given how long the story and film took to put together, in November 2021, it was announced that Sofia Botella had been cast in the film, in the lead role, and Snyder Ape revealed how he thought Sofia would make the perfect Korra. A little wrap around. Sure. Uh, 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 if you see him like this, yeah. Here you go. And that's him. Because the only thing is, like, right now, it's, it's cool. But just because in the rhythm, you, you see him, and you chamber, and you... We actually got to hear from other cast members as well and their story as to how they got cast. I, <laughs> uh was offered a role of Game of Thrones and was not able to do it. And so I think Zach must have heard that in spite of not actually gracing the screens, they did want me. So I had, I had passed the Benioff casting test. And speaking of other cast members, Sophia wasn't the only one to have to train for this role. Mine had to be lots of cardio. I remember the first time I saw Stiles on set, I was like, he looks amazing and I'm not supposed to look like that. Noble does not look like that. So for me, it was about getting really, really lean, sinewy and vascular and making it strange and weird and scary. Not only has Zack Snyder had history with directing and story writing, but this was only his second time being cinematographer and goes into detail about how this other experience was for him. It's a really physical thing, making a movie, especially operating. I try and train hard as I can before, just because I know I'm gonna miss days, and then on the weekend, we try and train pretty hard. Our cameras are overbuilt, and the lenses I made are super heavy. The camera is substantial. The process of physically shooting is exhausting. Many green screens were used, as well as real places, of course. However, it's important when a green screen is involved that the actors really sell what they are not seeing, but the audience will see later. For me to communicate to the actors where everything was it worked out really well and it actually saved a ton of time. The cheats are always that one set piece that you have that you can kind of anchor the reality in and once you do that you can pretty much understand spatially how it works. I just really wanted to make a giant atmospheric and space adventure. It's so, so, so big. So ambitious. And before we close off here, we did want to mention something that I don't think a lot of people expected already. It has already been revealed that this film will be a two-part film, meaning a sequel has already been in place, each part planned to be shot back to back, with the next installment confirmed with the title Part 2, The Scaregiver. We had a solid two months of just conditioning and preparing the body to get to that place. And I've never trained that much. Doing a lot of cold plunges and a lot of Pilates also to stretch the body. The impact and the sort of position in the body language and all the training that we're doing is sort of like putting us at that place where I feel really empowered and strong within my body. And as far as the answer to our trivia question, it was in 2004, Dawn of the Dead, where Snyder directed his first film. We'll have a huge anticipation for this film. It's amazing. Something so powerful that you just want more. And it's only the beginning. But we wanted to turn this around to you guys. What are your thoughts on all this? And what was your favorite moment? Let us know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Make sure you're subscribed with notifications on for more videos just like this. That's it for today, though. We'll see you all next time with a brand new video. Bye, guys. A little over a year ago where we were shooting the test with Sophia to see if she would be the one to be in the movie. Today, we're back doing Cora's origin village story, and it is the final day of shooting. So excited about that. Everyone's done an amazing job. It's been just really an honor to work with these people. It's always exciting to finish shooting, really have all the pieces of the puzzle that you have to put together in editorial. So get ready for Rebel Moon.